Hello and all, welcome. In this one, we're going to derive some identities for cosine of 3x and sine of 3x, and I'm going to do this through the world of complex numbers. So let's take a look at what I mean here. So first, first I'm going to write this as cosine 3x plus i sine 3x because that is the complex number form of the two, and that number form contains both the cosine 3x and the sine 3x, so it's useful already. Take a look. So next, I'm going to write this in exponential notation. It's going to look like e to the i 3x. Then we're going to apply a basic rule of exponents. What does that tell us? That means the following. That I can write this next piece as e to the ix, and then the whole thing raises to the third. Now, the e to the ix, that is perhaps the basic complex number. But then we can rewrite the e to the ix simply as follows here. Cosine of x plus i sine x, and the whole thing raised to the third. So far, we're just manipulating this. Now, in order to save time and perhaps space, I'm going to label cosine x as just c, and I'm going to relabel sine x as just s. So it's going to look like c plus i s to the third, and remember what it represents, cosine x plus i sine x to the third. But it's more convenient and more compact this way. Now this is a quantity raised to the third, so what we can do is expand that. We can do this in a couple different ways, I'll just actually multiply it out though. So it's going to be c plus i s plus c plus i s plus c plus i s. I left uh, one of the c plus i s factors there as you can see in green i'm going to multiply the two yellow ones first let's take a look so it's going to give me the following c squared plus cis plus another cis plus i squared times s squared times the c plus is so the yellow part that you see there next to the green part right above me that's just foil basically so i took c plus is and i foiled it with c plus is that's what is just foil Okay, now as you can see, when you look at this, CIS is there twice. So what is that telling you? You can combine that into two CIS. And any term with I squared, remember I squared is negative one, because it's a basic imaginary unit. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be C squared plus two CIS minus S squared times C plus IS. Okay, so I replaced I squared with negative one, and I, and I added the CIS parts together. Okay, the next goal then would be to multiply c plus is to each term of c squared plus cis minus s squared. So you distribute basically. Let's do that across the top, so it's going to look like c squared multiplying c plus is plus 2 cis times c plus is minus s squared times c plus is. So it's just a distributive property. So then after that I'm going to say the following here, it's going to be c cubed plus c squared is plus 2 cis squared plus 2 ci squared s squared minus s squared c minus i s cubed. So all I've done is I've distributed c squared 2 cis and negative s squared to each term inside there where it's green. Okay, so that gives me that entire expression. What I'm going to do now is just combine like terms as much as possible. Like term in this context basically means anything with i goes together and so on. So before I do that though, also observe the following. That right above my head of an i squared over here. You want to replace that with negative 1, as a, always, as a first step. So it's going to look like the following. c cubed plus c squared is plus 2c squared is minus 2c squared <laughs> minus s squared c minus i is cubed. Okay, crazy stuff, but uh, take a look. So what I've done is this i squared has been replaced with negative 1. So for this term now, it becomes negative 2c s squared. And also... I've color coded, so that's telling me the following, that the c cubed in yellow, and the negative 2 c s squared, and then the negative s squared c are like, ter are like terms, <laughs> and then c squared i s with the 2 c squared i s, and with the negative i s cubed in white there, those are like terms, so I'm just going to regroup things a little bit, it's going to look like this then, it's going to be c cubed minus 2 c squared minus s squared c plus c squared is plus 2c squared is minus is cubed. Okay, and another thing that I've done here now is I've emphasized the fact that each of the white terms has a green i present in it. And that is so because then it's a common factor, so you would pull that outside. And also notice that this is negative 2c s squared minus s squared c. So the variable parts are the same, which means that those are, again, like terms. The ones with the cs squared and negative s squared c in yellow, right above my head. So it's going to look like this. It's going to be c cubed minus 3s cs squared plus c squared s plus 2c squared s minus s cubed with the green i pulled out, the parentheses right here. 
And essentially at this point what we have is a complex number where the yellow piece right above my head represents the real part and of course the white piece above my head represents the imaginary part. Now don't forget that C stands really for the cosine function and S stands for the sine function. Clearly trying to like use actually written out forms of cosine and sine and this would take way too long. So let's go on to the next step. It's going to look like this. It's going to be C cubed minus 3C S squared plus 3C squared s minus s cubed why is that the case well that's the case because at the step above my head you have c squared s and then you have two c squared s those can be combined to give you three c squared s the s cubed part stays by itself when you look at this i'm going to write down the basic pythagorean theorem pythagorean identity rather so remember it's going to look like this in this context it's going to be c squared equals one minus s squared normally this is written as c squared plus s squared equals one in other words, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. But here what's useful is the following. Why would I rewrite it this way? Look above my head, at the, yellow, at the white writing rather, it's 3c squared s minus s cubed. And you see that that there, as you can see, has both a c which is cosine and s which is sine. And I don't want to mix those. So for that reason, using the Pythagorean identity, this term, the sc squared, can be replaced with 1 minus s squared, and it's going to make 3c squared s minus s cubed have only sines and no more cosines. That's the motivation. Okay, take a look. Look at the next one. It's going to be now s squared equals 1 minus c squared. Again, I took the basic Pythagorean theorem, which is s squared plus c squared equals 1. If you like, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. I'm just using you know s and c for sine and cosine. And I've rewritten it as c squared. So I've isolated c squared. And again, why would I do that? So I would do that because right above my head in yellow, as you can see, it says negative 3c s squared. That s squared can then be replaced with the right side of the identity that says that it's equivalent to 1 minus c squared. So let's actually apply all of this. What does that look like? It's going to be c cubed minus 3c times 1 minus c squared plus 3 times 1 minus s squared s minus s cubed with the i on the outside. So let me emphasize what I've done here, okay? That's s squared above my head has been replaced with 1 minus c squared. That's above my head here, okay? In the real part, so to speak. That c squared above my head has been replaced down below with 1 minus s squared. So that's visible above my head, roughly speaking. And now, notice the following. That I can simplify further. It's going to look like this. It's going to be c cubed minus 3c plus 3c cubed and then here is going to be the 3 times the 1 is 3 and then also the s has to be distributed to each yellow term there so it's going to be 3s minus s times s squared will be negative 3s cubed <laughs> minus s cubed with the 1 on the outside <laughs> okay so what is this telling us what can we do with all of this well take a look it's going to be now 4c cubed minus 3c plus 3s minus 4s cubed i and this is a simple pretty much as you can make it and what it means then is the following that the part below me now in yellow basically corresponds to cosine 3x it's like the re real part and then the other part that says 3s minus 4s cubed that corresponds to sine of 3x so i can get my identities as sine of 3x equals 3s minus 4s cubed which is equivalent remember to 3 sine of x minus 4 sine cubed because s is sine. Same thing over here. Take a look. It's going to be on the bottom there. Cosine of 3x is equivalent to 4 cosine cubed x minus 3 cosine x, which is equivalent to this part right here. Where I'm pointing kind of. Well, actually, on that side. You get it. It's on one of my sides here, okay? <laughs> All right, so this basically illustrates every single detail that I could think of, as you can see. This is both a powerful method for deriving trig identities for various kinds of a angles and so on, but at the same time, and if you think about it carefully, well, once you understand the concept of a complex number, and after that is just really a huge amount of algebra, and understanding that you can equate the real parts and then the imaginary parts as needed to get new identities, just as I have done here. Thanks so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.